Hello friends, today we would be doing some sample questions from a sample paper for the exam uh, IMO CSEA. Uh, we'll be doing these five point uh, questions, which are eight questions and each question is for five marks. Uh, so let's start reading the question. Uh, Arun and Benja joined a marathon at 12.4 and 11.6 miles per hour average speed respectively. So respectively means Arun is 12.4 and Benja is 11.6. When you're reading in exams, don't, don't uh, go for the names. You can just read it as A and B. That will be faster. After 48 minutes of run, Arun reached the finish line. How far behind in miles was B or Benja when Arun hits the finish line? So this is a very simple question. You have to find distance. So if you remember the formula for distance, distance is speed into time. For kids who don't know this, you can actually remember it via this grid. So this is this distance, this is speed and time. So you can uh, get all the formulas from here. Distance is speed into time. Speed is distance over time. And time is distance over speed. So you just need to remember this triangle. So here we need to find the distance, which is speed into time. Now, uh, so the distance here for Arun will be speed is 12.4 into time. Now, this is miles per hour and the time that is given to me in minutes. So we can we need to convert this into hour. So one hour is 60 minutes. So 48 minutes will be how many R? So that will be 48 times one, we do cross multiplication over 60. So this is 48 over 60, we simplify, which is four fifth of an R. So we do four fifth of an R. So we solve this, so we get 9.92 miles. So this is for Aru, the same thing we do for Benja. So we do 11.6 into four over five, so I'll get 9.28 miles. So how far behind in miles was Benja? So you do 9.92 minus 9.28. So I'll get a 4, 6 and 0 0.64 miles. That's my answer for the first question. Let's read the second question. The counting numbers are arranged in triangular manner. Counting numbers are basically all positive numbers, uh, starting with one, so one, two, three, four, until infinity. They are arranged in triangular manner as shown below. What is the last number in the 10th row if you follow the same order? Now, there are two, three ways to do this question. Now, they're talking about the 10th row. This is my first row, second row. This is my third row, this is my fourth row, and this is my fifth row. Now, if you look at the numbers here, uh, the center one, see here the difference is, let's just write these numbers, 1, 3, 7, 13, 21. So look at the number, the difference here is 2, then the difference here is 4, then the difference is 6, the difference is 8, right? So we need to find uh, the last number. So first we go on till 10. Uh, which is, so this is 8, then here you'll have a difference of 10. So my sixth number here will be a 31, and then there'll be a difference of 12. So this will become plus 12. So this will become 43, and we continue like that. Okay, so you have uh, this has plus two, which is write this. So this is plus two, this is four, then this is six, then this is eight, this is ten, then you have a twelve, or uh, then you have plus fourteen. Forty-three plus fourteen, so I'll get a fifty-seven, plus sixteen, so I'll get a seventy-three, plus eighteen, then I'll get a ninety-one. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is my 10th row. Now, so I need to find what are the numbers. Now they're saying what is the last number in the 10th row. So last number in the 10th row is this number. Okay, so if you see how the pattern is going. Um, so see this one has uh, one number. 
like if you see the pattern number of numbers so this has three this has five this has seven numbers this has uh, nine numbers so if you see the pattern so one three all these are odd numbers nine so this is fifth pattern 11 13 15 or uh, 17 and 19 so my 10th uh, row will have 19 numbers wherein this is at the center so I have eight numbers here and I'll have eight numbers here. So you write all these eight numbers starting. So you have a 90, 89, 88, 87, 86, 85, 84. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You have an 83 and 82. So the number that will come here, the, first, the last number, it will be number 82. Uh, this is one way to do it. The other, a shortcut way probably, uh, to do it is like this. Let me just clear this. The other way that you can do is, if you look at this pattern, uh, see, this is a 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. All these are square numbers. What do we mean by square numbers? Like 1 into 1, I get a 1. 2 into 2, you get a 4. 3 into 3, we get a number 9. 4 times 4, we get 16. So if you continue the pattern, okay, until the 10th row, so you will get 10 times 10 as 100. So here you will have an 100, like on the 10th row. And in the 9th row, the number that will have is 81. And so here you have 81 and the number that you start. So see the pattern is like this, 1, 2, 3, 4, then you go here 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, then 9 and then 10. So this is where, again, you start writing numbers. So this number will be 81. And this number will be plus 1 from this number. So we can directly go to 82. So the answer would be 82. These are the two ways that you can try this question. Let's move on to question number 3. Question number 3. Triangles ABC and DEC is an isosceles triangle. Given that BAC is 45 degree and DEC is... 42 degrees, find angle ABC. Now, whenever they tell you it's an isosceles triangle, isosceles triangle means two sides are equal. And uh, there's a theorem for isosceles triangle that when two sides are equal, like suppose this is an isosceles triangle. Let's name them something else. If suppose M and O are isosceles triangle and these two sides are equal, then there's a theorem which says that the base angles will also be equal in an isosceles triangle. So given in this triangle is angle uh, BAC is uh, BAC is 45 degrees and this is 90 degrees. This is the symbol for 90 degrees. So that means this side and this side is equal because this is the hypotenuse AC which is always the longest side. So this is 45 degrees. So this angle will also be 45 degrees. Okay, so this is what we have established. Then we go to triangle Let's separate it so that it becomes clear. You have a DEC. Okay, this is also an isosceles triangle. Assuming this and this side are equal, so this angle and this angle will be equal. And it is being given to be 42 degrees. Now, there's one more property in geometry that the angles, the interior angles of a triangle, they add up to 180 degrees. So, let's just name this as A. And since they are equal, I'll name them as A and A. So, I can say A plus A plus 42 degrees is 180 degrees. So I can say A plus A is 180 minus 42, which is uh, 8. And uh, so you have 138 degree and this is 2 times A. So therefore A will be 138 divided by 2, which is 69 degrees. So this whole angle is 69 degrees and this is 45 degrees. So the angle ACE which is ACE, will be 69 minus 45, which will be 24 degrees. So my answer here will be 24 degrees. Question number four. Mike has five coins, all heads up. How many times he must he flip three consecutive coins at a time to make sure all coins are head up, turn up head again? So you have five coins. 
which are all heads up. Now you have to flip three of them consecutively to make sure all coins are again uh, ten, uh, turned up head again. So let's start. So for example, this is my first turn. I flip these three coins, so I get tails, 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 heads, heads. Uh, then I'll flip these and then this coin. So I'll get head, tail, tail, and this will also be tail, tail. Then I'll flip these coins. Then I'll get head, 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 and then tail. Then again, I'll flip this and these two coins. I'll get tail, tail, head, head, head. Then I'll flip these three coins. This is, yeah. Then I'll flip these three coins. So I'll get tail, 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 tail. Okay, so if you see after five flips, after five flips, all the heads have been converted into tails. So similarly, if I try this pattern again, after another five flips, I'll get all of them as head, 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 head. Let's just try that. So what I'll do is I'll again, so let's just look here. I'll convert, I'll flip these three. So I get head, 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 tail and tail. Okay, then I'll flip this and this. So I'll get tail, head, 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 and head. Then I'll flip these. So I'll get tail, 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 and head. Then I'll flip this and this. So I'll get head, head, tail, tail, and tail. Then I'll flip these three, so I'll get head, 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 and head. So my answer to this question will be 10. I need to flip it 10 times to come back to head, 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 and head. Let's move on. Let's read question number five. Aunt Bob and G plays basketball once a week on different days, Saturday, Sunday, or Monday. Aunt plays on either Sunday or Monday. Bob does not play on Monday, but plays a day before G plays. What day does G play? basketball okay so we play basketball on different uh, days so um saturday sunday or monday so let's just say saturday sunday monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday and saturday uh in this case do not do it this way um Uh, so we we'll take Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. These are the only days where these guys are playing. R, E, B, and C plays football, plays basketball. Uh, on just once a week, they are playing only once a week on different days. Uh, Saturday, Sunday, or Monday. Okay, R, please. So they are... Three of them are playing on three different days. We need to find out uh, the days are Saturday, Sunday, or Monday. So who's playing on what day? So they think art plays on either Saturday or Monday. So art doesn't play on Sunday. Either he is on Saturday or Monday. These are the two days. So we know for sure that he doesn't play on. Uh, sorry, he plays on Sunday or Monday. So he's playing either on Sunday or Monday. So he's not playing on. Saturday. Okay, then uh, Bob does not play on Monday. So Bob does not play on Monday. So that means Bob will play either on Saturday or Sunday. Uh, uh, does not play on Monday, but he plays a day before uh, she plays. Okay, so when would uh, she play oh so this is bob does not play on monday but plays a day before she plays so assuming so this is when she plays so bob will play on this day and uh, art will play on this day so art will play on monday she will play on sunday and b will play on a saturday so uh, she will play basketball on a sunday 
날이 돌아가면서. Uh, let's read the question. Otha and her friends, Anira, Bocha, Clarita and Demri are to be seated in a room such that Anira stays at the middle and Otha sits beside her. In how many ways can she be seated? Let's just uh, say them as A, B, C, D and E. It's better that way. So there's only one condition, which is that Anira is in the middle or A is in the middle and E sits beside her. So E can sit here or uh, if A is sitting here, E can sit here. All others can sit in any order, which that's not mentioned. So what can be the possible seating? So the first seating we can do is E, A. And uh, let's just say, uh, because A is in the middle, so A will always stay in the center. So uh, E has to be beside us. So somebody has to sit here. So B, and then we are left with C and D. So whenever we are doing this, we'll keep B constant. We'll interchange C and D. Now B will take to the other side and we'll have B and B. So we'll have C, E, A and B, D. Now I'll take B here, which is E, A and C, B. Then we'll have B, E, A and B, C. These are six. Now you'll have another six wherein you're just changing this order. Or wherein you will have A in the middle and E sitting here. Correct. So you have B, C, D. Then you just change C, B, A, A, D. Uh, then you take C here. Then you have a uh, B, D. Then you have a D, B. And uh, so you have D, D, C, C. So I need to put B here. So you have a C, D. And you have a D, C. A, E, D. So you have two, two, two. And so the total number of combinations here is 12. Let's read question number seven. The grid below is a magic square. The sum of the numbers in all the rows, the columns, and the diagonals are the same. What is the number in the box marked X? So all the sum like this, rows, columns, diagonals, there is the the sum is the same. So what is the sum here? You have a 20. So the sum has to be 36. Okay. Now, if you see here, 9 plus 16, you'll have a 25. Uh, so you need 11 here to make it a 36. Now, you're saying diagonally also it equals to 36. So you do 12 plus 11, which is a 20. Uh, 3. So 23 minus 36 is a 30. Okay, now this also adds up to 36. So you do 13 plus 9, which is 22 plus x equals to 36. Therefore, x will be 40. So the value of x is 40. That's my answer. Question number 8, 40. So this is 40. Primary 4 pupils means students studying in grade 4. Uh, there were 40 grade 4 students who were invited to register to either a mathematics club or science club or both, but two did not register. 24 were in the mathematics club list and 28 were in the science club list. How many pupils registered to both the clubs? Now, so 40 out of 40 students, two did not register. So total number of students who registered were 38. Now, as per the information, 24 were in the math club and 28 were in the science club. So if you add it up, we get 58 students, but total we had only 38 students who are there, right? So what does that mean? I'll subtract it. So what does that mean? There were 14 students who were counted for both, like who had registered for both the clubs, which are in both of them, like in 24 as well as 28. So these are the students who got registered in both the clubs. So my answer is 14. I hope you like this video. Do visit my channel for more such videos. Thank you for watching.